Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Chakudash. Yahweh is named Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in Hada Sham name, Yahweh Shai, be name of the begotten Son, meaning He deliver, He saves. Rachakudash, Holy Spirit. Double honors unto the apostles and elders, great millstone that were well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. All right, Shalom and Ababa Ball. All right, back at it again with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And this is another edition of Palayim. Palayim meaning prayers. Okay, and this is also a slight correctional video too for the scripture of Zephaniah 1 and 12. You know, a couple of weeks back, you know, at camp, we brought this priest about. And for face value, I broke the scripture down correctly. But when I when I went into it further, in particular, the word lees, okay, L-E-E-S, all right, you know, I seen that it had to do with uh, wine, okay? And I think I said something about, like, how, you know, these uh, false prophets out here are basically drunk on the job, you know, figuratively, spiritually speaking, okay? But really, you know, that scripture where it says, settled upon your lees, is actually talking about you know the the yeast and the ingredients inside wine that yeah, that uh settles at the bottom of the wine when the wine has not been disturbed or moved around okay um you know i'm not sure if brothers drink minute maid okay i'm not you know what i'm saying i'm not trying to um advertise for minute maid don't get me wrong. I'm just, this is just an analogy that makes sense for me. And, uh, you know, maybe if, you know, brothers out there or sisters, you know, who, who, who have drink, drunk Minute Maid in the past, they're able to recognize this, right? But basically, you know, when you drink Minute Maid and you don't shake it up, okay, the little stuff, the, those little things that sink to the bottom of the cup, when you're just letting it sit there, all right, that would be considered like the lees or the dregs of it, okay? In particular, the lees. The dregs is more so like the last little sips of it, but the lees is like the stuff that floats to the bottom of the cup, okay? That's what that is. So pretty much that's the same thing in wine, all right? With wine, if you don't mix wine around, okay, then that the 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 lees of it is going to sink to the bottom right and so through the spirit like this priest of says zephaniah 1 and 12 and it shall come to pass at that time that i will search jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart the lord will not do good neither will he do evil right so the lord said he's going to search jerusalem with candles meaning he's going to put a light on everyone's works the lord is going to expose everyone and see whether their their works were good or whether their works were evil Pretty much everything that's done in the dark will come to light. The Lord's getting ready to shine that candle, man. Okay? And he said he's going to punish the men that are settled on their lees. Right? Okay? And, you know, we use this scripture as well to uh, further, you know, edify the point of how we're supposed to be on our watch. You know, we're supposed to be watchmen. We're, but, you know, you use this precept really for those for dudes who are complacent in Babylon. They're comfortable in Babylon. They're settled on their leaves. Okay, they're not they're not stirred up in the spirit. Okay, like we say, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. We should be stirred up in the spirit. We should be hot. We should be fervent in this thing. You know, we should not have a complacency mindset in this truth. We should be ambitious in this truth, man. You know, and understand that look, now is not the time to settle on our leaves. As we say, arise and depart. For this is not your rest, man. Now is not the time to rest in Babylon, man. Okay? Okay? So we want to be like that wine that's stirred up. And, you know, when I was doing more research, they were saying how, you know, it's good when you're drinking wine to stir the cup up so it can oxidize even more. But now it all makes sense because I remember a few months back when the beloved Elder Big Gad, all right, Elder Tazadakia, came and uh, visited us, you know, he was telling us, you know, when you when you drink wine, you should you should uh, swirl it around, you know. So it, it just it just finally came full circle. 
full swirl, pun intended, you know, for me just now, you know, me doing that research, man. Okay. And it's kind of like the same thing with Minute Maid. You know, when you have Minute Maid, okay, I'm not saying Minute Maid is the healthiest juice to drink or none of that. I'm just giving the analogy for the sake of edification. Okay. When you have Minute Maid, you know, and you don't, if you don't shake it up, those, those little flakes settles to the bottom of the cup or the glass, whatever you're drinking out of, right? So it's like the same thing with the lees in wine, okay? So we got to be stirred up in the spirit, man. We, we can't be on our watch. We can't be complacent. You know, we got to, we got to, um, you know, be circumspect, man, okay? Be ambitious in this truth, man. Not have that complacency mindset. And it's the spirit, because I was actually just talking to brothers about that earlier today. Well, I was planning on talking to brothers about that, Salakia. All right, I'm over here thinking I already accomplished that, but I was writing notes, stuff that I wanted to bring to brother's attention, okay? And uh, that was a part of the notes, this particular precept. And then I was like, the spirit was on me to make a prayer out of it, okay? And, you know, when you do the prayers, you got to go into the Hebrew to break the words down. So I'm breaking the word leads down. And when you look in the blue letter, it looks like the word is shamar, okay? But that's not the word. The Hebrew word is a uh, shamarayam, all right? If I'm not mistaken, all right? Shamarayam. It looks like shamar, but it's shamarayam, okay? Which goes into lees, you know? And so when I was uh, breaking the scripture down, I said, you know, all oh, these false prophets, they're getting drunk on the job. Because when you go into the blue letter, I'll we'll just do it real quick for edification's sake. When you go into the blue letter, Zephaniah 1, okay, which spiritually they are, you know, but it's not about that, okay? Oh, damn, Salakia. Um, bear with me, Baba Kusha. Okay, so now, when you go into that word, leads in the blue letter, you see the word looks like the Hebrew word shamar, right? Okay. And it says root word etymology from Strong's H104, which is shamar, which means to keep guard, to watch, right? To be on your watch, right? So through the spirit, this word right here is really shamara. Okay. Because it's not the same word. That's why this one is Strong's H105 and Shamar is Strong's H104. Okay, and you see the word here is lees or dregs. Okay, lees, dregs. It says something preserved, i.e. the settlings, plural, only of wine, dregs, wines on the lees. Right, and that's what happens when wine gets settled. Okay, the lees seeps to the bottom of the glass. Okay, and some other things too, you know, other mixtures or like, let's say you have liquids and you put some substance in the liquid. All right. Sometimes the uh, like if you have real juice, right, if you have real juice and you don't shake the juice up. Okay. You'll see the leaves separate from the liquid, man. Or like, let's say you have um, like a, a, um, like a, a lemonade or something, you know, and you put sugar in it. Okay, that sugar is not going to fully dissolve. So the sugar that doesn't dissolve is going to seep to the bottom of the cup. That's why you got to stir the homemade lemonade up, right? So it's the same thing in the spirit. The Lord, he's stirring us up so that we're not getting settled and complacent in this place, spiritually speaking, man. Okay, so now when you go further into it, I had to, I had to, um, you know, it shows you in the blue letter as well, but I, I looked it up online, okay? And the Hebrew word for leaves really is a, uh, Shamarayam, all right, as it says right here, right next to Isaiah 25 and 6. Shamarayam, okay, and I did I did some research on it, all right, set it on the leaves, meaning it says this is an old biblical idiom, all right, and um, I actually want to go into that word idiom for edification's sake. Idiom, a group of words established by usage as having a meaning not, dedu not deducible from those of the individual words. Characteristic mode of expression in music or art. But the point being the first definition. 
like when someone says it's raining cats or dogs, right? You know, that means it's raining heavy, not that it's literally raining cats or dogs. So it's considered to be an idiom, okay? An idiom is a phrase that when taken as a whole has a meaning you wouldn't be able to deduce from the meanings of the individual words is essentially the verbal equivalent of using the wrong math formula but still getting the correct answer. The phrase kill two birds with one stone is an example of an idiom, okay? That's it. So now, going back to the precept, or the, the research, rather, of the precept, it says this is an old biblical idiom, all right? Let me... Let me make sure that I'm pronouncing that word correctly. Idiom. Okay, idiom. All right. It says, this is an old biblical idiom, but still use. It refers to the lees, dregs, sediments of wine or other liquids that settle in the bottom of the containing vessel if it is not disturbed. Hence, the idiom refers to someone or something that is at ease, not disturbed, or worried right okay because a lot of these dudes out here they're not literally leaves in a wine bottle but metaphorically and figuratively they are because they're settled and they're complacent in the society they're not stirred up in the spirit okay and now you know here's a link too that i ran into figured might as well read from it all right it says lees this is biblestudytools.com lees hebrew all right, this is not the correct Hebrew, okay? This is, uh, you know, the Aramaic, uh, it's like the uh, Yiddish, you know? We, we, we deal with the Paleo Hebrew, okay? But, you know, these words derive, like a lot of the Paleo, a lot of these Yiddish words derive from the, the Paleo. So you can kind of like take the meat from the bones with words like this, right? Like, because it has the SH character, which is the Sha, the E you would ignore but the e technically is the is the ah character all right the um, ma character ma all right the r the ra character and then the i in the yiddish a lot of times the i is really a y in the hebrew it's really the ya character and then the m at the end so you know if you were to translate it to the paleo it would be shamarayam okay just like for for example the word I is also interchangeable with J. Okay, so a lot of times you'll see in the scriptures certain uh, people in the scriptures who had, you know, an I in the beginning of their name or in a, uh, a Y, right, or a J, Salakia. And you'll see in the in the Hebrew that really translates to the Yah character. For instance, like the name Isaiah translates to Yeshia. Okay, Jeremiah which would be uh, Yaramaya, all right? Yaramaya, you know? Some brothers say Yaramya, okay? But Yaramaya, you know? Okay? So, you know, brothers say it fast, so sometimes brothers say Yaramaya, you know? But tomato, tomato. Anyways, okay? It says, from a word meaning to keep or preserve, it was applied to lees, from custom from the custom of allowing wine to stand on the leaves that it might thereby be better preserved men settled on their leaves are men hardened or crusted the image is derived from the crust formed at the bottom of wines long left undisturbed the effect of wealthy undisturbed ease of the on the ungodly is hardening they become stupidly secure right they become secure in babylon they don't they don't sign they they don't sign they don't cry their spirits are not stirred up they are not grieved for the affliction of joseph as a matter of fact that precept is right here amos six and one so they got that correct let's get that precept all right a lot of our people are comfortable in this place man that's why the lord is going to destroy them amos six and one woe to them that are at ease in zion and trust in the mountain of samaria which are named the chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came, right? I'm going to skip down to verse 6. Let me start at verse 3, actually. Amos 6 and 3. Ye that put far away the evil day and caused the seed of violence to come near. That's right. A lot of our people, they don't want the Lord to come back. They're putting off the day of the Lord far. Okay? They don't want the Lord to come back anytime soon. It says, They lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock. 
and the calves out of the midst of the stall that chant to the sound of the vow and invent to themselves instruments of music like David. Right. So they're in that mirth, party, party spirit. Want to live it up. Shalom. It says that drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the chief ointments, but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph, man. That's right. Meaning they're not stirred up. They're not worried about the welfare of our people. They could care less. Okay. And that's what it is. All right. That's what it is, man. You know. So that's the point on that precept right there. Okay. Now I want to go. Uh, I'm going to get into the prayer now. All right. This is uh, Zephaniah 1 and 12. It says, Yahweh, meaning he exists. He, he is. He to be. Right. That's the name of the Heavenly Father. Okay. Ba in ha the sham name. Yahweh Shai. All right. Which is the name of the only begotten son, meaning he deliverer, he saves, okay? That's his name, Yahweh Shai, man, all right? And he is going to deliver us and save us from our sins and from this captivity, man, through the grace of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, all right? Now it says, uh, Baba Kosha, meaning please, Aisha, make, Awathia, me, Haya, be, Shamar, which Shamar means to watch, okay, to be uh, circumspect, all right, and I got this precept in particular from the scripture in Exodus, Exodus 23 and 13, and in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other, other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth, that's right, okay. So we got to be circumspect. We got to be on our watch. The so word circumspect means to uh to look around. Okay, circum meaning like circle, all right, or circumference. Okay, and spec meaning spectacle, to look. Okay? It says ba which is in call which is all dirakmya. All right? Which dirakmya is my ways. Okay, the rock meaning way, yum plural, ya meaning my first person possessive, the rock yum ya, my ways, wa and la a not qua pa a settled al upon shamarayum, my or or lees, all right, because qua pa a is settled, al is, a, is upon, okay. Shamarayam Lees. All right, so all together, you know, that's the prayer. You know, Abarat Zadah's message was edifying. I'll go over it one more time. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kusha, Asha, Wathia, Haya, Shamar, Bakal, Durakniya, Wala'a, Kwapa'a, Al, Shamarayam. You know, and you can end it off by saying the water, which means the water means thanks. All right. Tawab, which is good. Amun, which means, you know, so be true or, you know, confirming it to be believed. So, you know, Lord willing's lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim al Shah, Bashim al double honor to the Apostle, his great most and never will. Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom and above all.